This is John McConnell, the hypnotist who practices in Riverside, California since 1991. Now, in this video, I'm going to explain the hypnotic model of the mind. And this is going to demonstrate how suggestions are very effective at making changes in people's behavior. Okay? So, right here is a, when we're born, the mind is wide open. You may know this because of the kids that you've known in your life, that their minds are just like sponges. So as we're kids growing up, it doesn't make any difference whether it's positive or negative in nature, but whatever we learn, it becomes known to our minds. Now, kids learn through the process of identification and association. So a young child would look at this, uh, this fancy pencil and look at the color of it and look at the weight of it and would identify this as a fancy pencil. So that's the form of identification. The association, uh, associative learning is, let's say mom is in the kitchen and she's baking something in the oven and a young child walks into the kitchen and touches the hot oven door and experiences that little pain of, of a burn on the tip of the finger that child will associate that learning, that, that situation, with mom baking something in the oven. So that's the associative learning. So that's how we learn. And whatever we learn as we're kids growing up, it becomes known to the mind. Now, between the ages of about 10 and 14, basically puberty, we form this critical area of mind. And this critical area of mind is a filtering layer of the mind. And what it does is it critically analyzes all the information that comes into the mind. It checks the files down here. And if it's something that's known to the mind as you were a kid growing up, it accepts it and it reinforces that learning. And if it's something new or different, it has a tendency to kick it out through a dream or some other process. Now, as that critical area of mind forms, it splits the mind up into layers. Up above here is the conscious mind. That's where you have your logic, your reasoning, your willpower, and your ability to make decisions. And then, of course, you have the critical area of mind that filters all the information and only accepts what's been learned before. And then down here is everything that you learned as a kid growing up. And that becomes the subconscious mind. And, it, and it's kind of like your life script, all your lifelong learning when you were a kid growing up. Now, what's interesting about this is clinical studies have demonstrated that the conscious part of the mind represents 12% of the total mind's power. And the subconscious represents 88% of the mind's power. Now let's, let's take a common habit that people like to get over with, like smoking, okay? So if a person uses their logic and their reasoning and willpower and they make a decision, I've had enough with smoking, I want to quit smoking, this is ridiculous, it's not good for me, it's expensive, it's dirty, I want to quit smoking. So those thoughts come into the critical area of mind, it finds I started smoking when I was 16 years old. I've smoked for 20 years. I really enjoy smoking. It finds all these positive things about smoking down here. So that thought or idea of quitting smoking is kicked out. So what do you have? You have 12% of your mind trying to change 88% of your mind. And it's trying to take the change through a filtering mechanism that only accepts what's been learned before. This is why it's very difficult to make these simple changes consciously. Now, what hypnosis is, is the conscious mind doesn't quite pay full attention. Remember in the first video about the, the driving your car and your mind drifts off to another thought or idea? That's what happens here. And a very relaxed door opens in this critical area of mind. 
And this critical area of mind is vented out through faucets at the ends of your hands and feet. And while this door is open, we can turn down that you started smoking 16 when you were 16 and that you've enjoyed smoking for years. And we can put in here that, that you quit smoking and you're really proud of yourself for quitting. And, and you're delighted with the fact that you quit smoking. And as a matter of fact, you, it seems like you quit smoking years ago and you were very successful at it. And you have a nice exercise program and you're watching what you're eating, okay? All of these things are in here. So now, when you logically use your willpower and you make a decision that you quit smoking, it, it finds that you did quit smoking, you're proud of yourself for quitting, you're delighted with the fact that you quit smoking, and it seems like you quit a long time ago. Okay, so now you have 100% of your mind working together with the full cooperation of the critical area of mind. This is why hypnosis is a powerful tool for simple changes like this. Any change. You can use any thought that you want here, any behavior. I can give you subconscious agreement with what you consciously desire. And that's why you have to consciously desire the change that you want. Hypnosis cannot make you do anything that you don't want to do. So on the next video, I'm going to explain how stress affects the mind. So uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.